coming up on Theater Talk. Do you vote your heart? I vote with my heart. Good. And Adam lacking one, what do you do? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I, I uh, honor the privacy of the ballot box. <laughs>
quote unquote non-commercial in many ways that you, you you really want it to be acknowledged by the Tony Award in order to spike sales. And you think well, well, it's not based so, on a movie. Well, it so is based we, on a movie, but it's not an obvious movie. So we're saying that Harry Potter is going to win because it's bold and it's commercial and Mean Girls is not going to win because it's bold and commercial. Like I don't you, understand. You see a discrepancy. The, <laughs> I, I, I'm not well, understanding I the, uh, the 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 reasoning there. Well, but I don't. I don't think, think, I don't think, I don't think it's bold, bold and non-commercial. But Harry it Potter is means a prestige that you're event, a unlike Mean Girls. No. Mean Girls is just a fun show. I don't think Mean Girls. But is Elizabeth, bold at all. as you all in the Drama Critics Circle awarded the effects and the staging and the magical look mm -hmm. of of Harry Potter, which it had, and I and I wouldn't say that, for example. Mean Girls had n new innovative staging. But and the advantage of the the citation, the drama critic circle, is yeah. that you can differentiate between the play right. and right. the production right. values, right. and it's a very careful wording there. Mm -hmm. That said, I agree that the Ben's visit will win and should win. And it's not just excellence. I mean, it is excellence, but it's also there's a snob factor, there's a prestige factor involved. Mm -hmm. I think that yes. for better for worse. SpongeBob and Mean Girls, even among people who really like them, and I, I like both of those shows, uh, they do seem like shows that are aimed at some level of children, and that's true of Frozen as well. And uh, Band's Visit is very much a, an adult show. And Band's right. Visit, there are no show-stopping numbers, there's no production numbers. It's a human, charming, eccentric thing about a band that gets stranded in an Israeli town that's supposed to be dull. Turns out it isn't dull. There's lots of interesting human interaction. Now that's a party. Mean Girls is a Broadway animal from beginning to end. But it's interesting that now, and I think this is what you're saying, that show, Mean Girls, that fits those, checks those boxes, is not the one that is mm -hmm. the instant win. Exactly. It's the other one, the one that would, you know, 20 years ago would probably never have come to Broadway in the first place. But for the past few years, when the Tony voters have been given, given the opportunity to vote for something that's an innovative work of art, mm -hmm. they do go with that. But now here you have in the plays where you're right, it's, it's not an innovative play, but all the other plays are gone. You know, we're early in the season or are gone. Whereas they're here with this juggernaut that's just sitting there, and so well, I think a big yeah. difference this year is that I think the favorite right now would be the Ben's Visit. But if you remember, the prestige musical is not always a shoe in. I would always think of the year of Caroline or Change mm -hmm. right. versus I think it was Avenue Q and Wicked, which is very yeah. a very similar situation as to this one. Another transfer, prestige transfer. Except Carolina Shash did not win. I'm going to jump to Book of a Musical. So here we have the band's visit. You can stay here with us tonight if you want to. No, no. You have done too much already. Edamar Moses. Frozen Jennifer Lee. Mean Girls Tina Fey. And SpongeBob, oh, is it Kyle Jaro? Is Tina Fey's star power TV TV personality thing going to carry her into beating Edamar Moses? Well, yes. I hope not. I think so. I yeah. hope not. I think so. I, I really think Edamar Moses did a much better job. But that's a different question. A that's a different question. I heard they yeah. might actually put this category yeah. on the telecast, which they usually don't. And one of the motivations might it's be they Tina think Fey. Tina Fey could win and she's ratings. I don't know. I, I think, think Ben's Visit a, had the best book. I think oh. there will be a split of the votes in there. That musical will go to Ben's Visit and book will go to me. Uh, I'm going to make a prediction that, it, that Edamar Moses is going to win for Ben's Visit. What I think, think it's going to be very tight. This is one of the hardest ones to predict. Yes, yes. And, um, and I think that this might, what might be working in Tina Fey's favor, in addition to her celebrity, in addition to the, the very good work that she does in the show, yes. is that people do have an impulse to spread the wealth a little bit. Mean Girls did get 12 nominations. It's hard to think of that many other categories in which it has a very strong chance of winning. And in the same way that, you know, Come From Away won Best Director last year for, for Ashley, mm. uh, this might get that kind of award. Here's an award we can give to Mean Girls. And mm -hmm. Tina Fey sent pink pencils to everyone in the press. <laughs> Here's another hard category. Uh, best revival of a musical, My Fair Lady. Once on this island. What you are, we made you. Rogers and Hammerstein's Carousel. Wait, were the others not written by anyone? <laughs> <laughs> Anonymous. They were no, they, I, well, sense. their estates are not in there. <laughs> oh, I see. I, I would definitely go with Ed, Edward Albee's My Fair Lady. It was, <laughs> it was just so memorable. Oh, I mean, Rogers and Hammerstein. I just think that's going to win. Carousel? My Fair Lady. Oh, My Fair Lady. <laughs> yeah. It's a beautiful, sumptuous production. The acting was revelatory, and uh, it just made the show fresh for me. I think the most emotional show always 
wins, and I think the most emotional so show was Carousel in terms of drawing an emotional reaction. No love for the audience. goat once on this island? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you know, I think that may be, as Adam was saying about the other category, something where they look for something they can give that marvelous revival. Um, but it may not be best revival of a musical. Maybe it'll be in scene design. Or Wait, which one? Which one is the? Oh, I'm sorry. Once revival? on this island. It, oh, is oh, it, uh, 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 well, do you think uh, My Fair Lady will win or Carousel? I think My Fair Lady will win. There's a lot of uh, discussion about uh, some of it prompted by me uh, about <laughs> <laughs> whether Carousel really even bothered to pay attention to the moment that it was. Uh, being revived, and I feel it did not do that in a way that My Fair Lady did. You mean the Me Too movement? Them. Yes, and yeah. well, just what, what, what is the purpose of doing a revival of a great show like that if you're not going to see it now in the relationship to new things that we've learned in our society? I just find How did they I, avoid addressing that in the show? Well, they cut the line that they was causing so much trouble. Cut some of the lines. Well, about just, abuse. I feel like they generally kind of uh, bulldoze over the plot elements with all this gorgeous aesthetic presentation. So there are these magnificent transporting dances and I think it's gonna win for best choreography. Yes, I agree. Uh, and, and, there's these, and, the, and the vocals are real, you know, uh, opera vocals with Renee Fleming doing a guest appearance and, and they really, <laughs> everything looks grand, you know, but I think that you do lose a little bit of the texture of the plot in it as opposed to My Fair Lady. All of no, these revivals I, are really strong this year. Yes, I, I wouldn't yes, see yes, any yes. of them again. It's a hard category no, for them. And they were the only ones as well. <laughs> there were the only three revivals, and so there were only three nominees. Also, the voters are not the nominators, but to the extent that the nominators reflect the voters, it might be worth pointing out that the director of Carousel is not nominated for Best Director, mm. um, and the other two were. And to some extent, that may reflect some mm. general feeling about the value of the work that they do. Uh, all right, so let's go to Best Revival of a Play. She's Angels in America. Edward Alvey's Three Tall Women. Eugene O'Neill's, I guess he's got an estate now. <laughs> Eugene O'Neill's The Iceman Cometh, Lobby Hero, and Travesties. This was a Great. good category, yeah. finally. Brilliant, mm -hmm. brilliant. And oh, did I love travesties. I might as well say that, it's not gonna win, but that's great, a great. So by, by, by Michael's show. standard, which is the longest and which is the most? I was famous? just gonna say, Angels is long. <laughs> it's from London, it won awards. It's a prestigious event, it's got it in the bag. I mean, travesties and it is, tremendous is an English competition. play, but it's not- It's not long enough. It's not long enough. But now, The Iceman Cometh, one of the greatest American long. plays. Long, they long, 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 not English. They but long. And then possibly rivaling <laughs> Angels in America as the greatest American play ever written. It really, it really does. Iceman okay. Cometh? Yes. Angels in America it's arguable. two plays. Let's not forget, they actually put two plays that ran separately on Broadway originally. And one different two separate seasons, Tony And they one, put them yeah. all together. Well, they so ran in rep on It's original. kind of an unstoppable juggernaut. And they put them all together and made you pay for both of them. Yes, they did. <laughs> <laughs> they made you pay? Well, no, I mean, no. I oh, well, so are them. we all agreeing that yeah. Angels in America is likely to win? Yes. 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 And right. we, do, do any of us, I dissent from whether it should win or not. Well, I think that in some ways for me, the most perfect revival is Three Tall Women. I agree. Well, I just want to say, Glenda Jackson was here last week. She's on theater. And talk. you're still alive? Uh, she <laughs> was, was so fabulous. I don't actually agree with you that we want audiences to like us. We want them to listen, and we want them to laugh in the right places and be quiet in the right places. We don't necessarily <laughs> want us to like them. One of the honors of my life to sit and talk to this woman. Well, she had just had a confrontational interview in the L.I.T. Yes, yeah, that's what she, Charles well, Milty's classic interview. Which was a great article. But, but a I, great article. She was a darling. I adored She's her. She's got the award in the yeah. bag. I mean, this is a weak field. If you look at some of the other nominees, they put in Amy Schumer, who wasn't really universally <laughs> raved about. They just didn't want to put Uma Thurman. <laughs> this was such a weak year for that. And this is when yes. we get to some of these categories that right. are really... <laughs> well, let me name the, the other actresses. Susan's crying because she's friends with Amy no, Schumer now. No, yes, oh, she... she <laughs> well, so best so BFFs, I'll tell you. Best actress um, in a play. Glenda Jackson in Edward Always Be Told Women. Condola Rashad in George Bernard Shaw's St. Joan. <laughs> Lauren Ridloff and Mark Medoff's Children of a Lesser God. And Amy Schumer in Steve Martin. Steve Martin. Martin. Meteor a Shower. Wow. Meteor Shower. Well, so Obviously Amy there, Schumer. There are only four nominees, and yeah. that's because of the way that the rules are structured. When there are fewer than nine eligible candidates, they reduce the They really didn't to want to put Uma Thurman. Well, they wouldn't so. give it to poor old Elizabeth McGovern. No, or, what yeah, we're, well, not that, or to Uma Thurman, or Lily Taylor, yeah, or Janine right, Garofalo. Right, right. Yeah. But that, was only, that only adds up to eight. And what right. really should have happened, what's, the reason that this is happening is that for reasons that I, I could argue about all day, the two women in the children were both considered featured actresses, even though 
you know, that, one that of them is a crazy really decision. That is such. I mean, there's only three decision. people in the whole play. Right. But wouldn't so that have been the doing Francesca of producers to try to hedge their bets? But also, the, the committee has the right to overrule it and make its own decisions. And a similar thing happened this year with Lobby Hero, where they just yes. didn't want to make any decisions, so they called them all featured. And, yes. And the result of this is. Uh, is, is that these two actors who could easily have been nominated in this category, these two women, who are both wonderful in the children. Deborah are, Finlay and Francesca Annis. And Francesca mm -hmm. Annis. Deborah Finlay is nominated for Featured. Francesca Annis is not. Both of them could easily have been nominated for Best yeah. Actress. And, I, and, and easily not won. And <laughs> easily lost to Glenda Jackson <laughs> like Glenda everybody Jackson. else. And also yeah. it was interesting to me that, for example, in Harry Potter, I thought this, the lead was Anthony Boyle. That's his name, Anthony Boyle, who played, uh, what's his character's name? Scorpius. But, but yet they gave it to Jamie Parker because he played Harry Potter, although he really wasn't the lead. Scorpius part. gets more yeah, stage time. Scorpius. It's about Scorpius. And yeah. well, Laura Benanti was eligible in what category? Features. Because she easily could have been nominated instead of Amy Schumer. She was a much better performance in that. Yes, I but she was eligible for feature, Laura Benanti. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 So, so, so sometimes the producers. <sighs> defeat themselves with those. It's really category issues. fraud. Yeah. Yeah. It's category fraud. But no, obviously, but Susan, obviously Amy Schumer <laughs> is not going to win. <laughs> <laughs> Glenda Jackson Amy is Schumer. the surest We're thing. We're not dissing since. Amy Schumer. I, I thought no, 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 no. Was yeah. 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 no, this is a slam dunk. Glenda Jackson. But now let us go to the performance by a leading actor in a play. Andrew a Garfield, no, Angels in America, in Tom Hollander, Travesties, Jamie Parker, Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, parts one and two, Mark Shut Rylance, Farinelli and the King, and Denzel Washington in The Iceman Cometh. It's wow. Another, it's what not a, a poor character. showing for American actors there. Not at all. Yeah, although uh, Rylance and, 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 uh, and Garfield are kind of half seas, both of them. How is, right. how is Garfield half sea? Who's half? Uh, well, I think he was born here and then raised there. Ah, okay. Oh, oh. Uh, well, I didn't that. know that. Or right. vice versa. But, it, but he's, he's, he calls himself mm -hmm. British American. So what do you right. think? What do you think? I think it's going to be Andrew Garfield. Huh. Um, I, but I, I, think it's, it's, I think it's a race between Andrew, Andrew Garfield and Denzel, Denzel Washington. Denzel, wonderful. That, it's an extraordinary performance. I just saw it recently. By Denzel Washington? Yeah. Yeah, yes. Yes. Oh. No, I, thought, I, think I thought it was amazing. I was not looking forward to another production of Iceman Cometh. What do you think? Andrew Garfield. Uh, I mean, Prior Walter is one of those great roles. He's flamboyant mm -hmm. and he's abandoned. He develops AIDS and he's full of hallucinations. And Steven Spinella in the original was one of the most oh, brilliant wonderful. performances I've ever seen. Yes. I, I, I think uh, Andrew Garfield will win, but I'm not really happy with this category at all. I, I would have trouble if I were voting. Really? But, yeah, I, yeah. Didn't, I didn't like uh, the acting in Angels in America, I thought it was overacted, and uh, in general, in or just general, including but particularly Andrew by him. I did like Tom Hollander in Travis. Oh, movies. I love Hollander. Yeah. So if I were a voter, I suppose that's how I would vote. Huh? Wow. And you? Privacy of the ballot. Oh no, no uh, I'm not no, asking. No, 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 I'm asking you think, yeah, who think, you think I, I, will win. I think that Andrew Garfield will win, but there may be some I factors agree. involved again with the spreading of the wealth. It depends if people in the supporting category, featured categories that we're yeah. getting to, if people end up voting for Angel's cast members there, then they may want to give something to to uh, ice my cup. All right, so I'm going to jump right. to featured very quickly. Best performance. I'm going to say I hope Denzel does not get it. <laughs> if only because if he does, then he will think, that's it, I am ready for King Lear, which he has expressed <laughs> the will to do, and I really do not think we need another King we Lear. Need <laughs> we need Glenda Jackson. No, we want Glenda Jackson's Lear. Yes, exactly. That, that I will go that see. That we want. Best performance in <laughs> musical by a leading actor. Harry had <laughs> Harry Ham and, Ham and Bacon. No, not Ham. All right, Ham and Bacon. Bacon. Harry had Patton. Okay. Peyton Bacon. Why can't the English teach their children how to speak this verbal class distinction? The best <laughs> performance of the musical by a leading actor, Harry had Peyton. Yes. For My Fair Lady. Joshua Henry for Rogers and Hammerstein's Carousel. Tony Shalhoub for The Band's Visit. And Ethan Slater for SpongeBob SquarePants. I hope you're I, happier with this category, that's a, Jesse. I, that's a tough one. I'm the only one who's going to say Tony Shalhou for the band's visit. It's his fourth nomination. He gave a subtle, sophisticated, I think, wonderful performance. I think he won't win because he gave, he gave a subtle. He didn't sing much. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I didn't, no, he didn't sing much. It's not that much of a musical performance, but who cares? Rules are meant to be broken. I think it's a, a lot of people are predicting the sponge. I, I think e Ethan Slater probably will win, and the Tony Shalhoub, who I would vote for, will not for the reason that Adam's. Why? I, I don't know if Ethan's going to win. I think there's a ah. very good chance that, that Joshua Henry will win. Uh -huh. uh, it's a big part. Um, it's a dramatic part in a way that I think I think there still might be some anti-sponge bias on the part of the voters, <laughs> um, and uh, they don't think that the sponge. I feel there's been a bit of a turning of the tide recently That's what I feel. in favor of SpongeBob. 
uh, and that could help Ethan Slater in this. And we were talking earlier about the spreading of the goods thing, plus the if costumes I were spreading and the sets. wealth, I, I, that, this is one that I would consider, but I would also seriously consider orchestration, sound, costumes, set. As, as yes. SpongeBob. I think and, they will and get director. that. But, but can I ask you? And I mean, we, we, we do, well, I'm yeah. biased because we had Joshua Henry, and it was magnificent. Soon you'd leave me, off you would go in the mist of day. And Ethan Slater, I mean, that was enjoyable, but that to me was not what I think of. But, but you're acting. talking about your preference. You're, we're we're uh, not oh, about right, what. Well, no, oh, oh, well, and, I don't know. It is acting. Is, it is acting. What is? What, what Ethan Slitter is doing is acting. Well, well, he's up on a stage and he has a great deal of energy and he's doing a character voice. Well, that's that a, is absolutely that's not acting. <laughs> well, that is acting. <laughs> What's Glenda Jackson? Very, that is acting. <laughs> Very true. Very, sounds like acting. If she okay. did SpongeBob, <laughs> if Glenda yeah. did SpongeBob, she can do anything. Admit and, right. and also to go back to the uh, Tony Shalhoub, yeah. which I also very much liked, but I don't think it's a strong musical theater performance. Mm. Per se, mm. yeah, I think but it's so still a performance. Right. It is. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. think everyone except for Higgins probably has a realistic shot this year. Although he was, yeah. I loved him, but oh, oh, he's oh, not going to win. Okay. Everyone right. except for Haddon Pace. Yes. Haddon Pace. Pace. So now on to best performance by a leading actress in the musical: Lauren Ambrose, My Fair Lady, Haley Kilgore, Once on This Island, La Chance, Summer, The Donna Summer Musical, Katrina Lenk, The Band's Visit, Taylor Louderman, Mean Girls and Jesse Mueller, Carousel. I think it's between Katrina Link and Lauren Ambrose. I think it's mm -hmm. Katrina Link. I think she's just brilliant in this show, and I think she's given us a series of brilliant performances since once, and including Indecent, uh, last season. She's like the I Angelina, think, I think she's, she's the Angelina Jolie of Broadway, don't you think? Because of her cheekbones? Oh, she's so she beautiful. She just has that kind of magic to her, but yeah. I think it's gonna be Lauren Ambrose, because she reinvents a classic role. She's on stage a lot. Yes. Yeah. She's like, a, 10 costume changes, and her acting choices to me really resonated in each scene. Huh, what about you? Oh, I, I also think it's between the two of them, but I, I, my guess would be that it's gonna be Katrina Lang. Uh, I think that the charisma of that performance and the, uh, the not, just the sheer number of people that I've heard talking about that performance. What do you think, Jess? All right. I think Katrina Lang will win. Finally, best original score written for the theater, Angels in America. The band's visit. Dance, the dance. You see the wind that moves the trees. Is Frozen. Finally come, come to knock down my door. I can't hide this time like I hid before. Mean Girls. And SpongeBob SquarePants. By everybody. By everybody. everybody. <laughs> Our hit career. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's going to be Band's Visit. Band's visit. Yes. I think it's yes. going to be, if it, if it is David Yazbek, then they should shut down the Tonys. The thing yeah, I, I like completely is, agree. David yeah. Yazbek no, no, no. has deserved it probably several times before, and this is his best work mm. ever. And, and I, lo I love that it's completely different from anything he's done before. Right. Yeah. yeah, It's a big departure for him. It's, one, it's just great. What an and achievement. Had, just one last question. What do you think will get the most Tonys? The mm. most Tonys? Band's Visit. I think it's probably going to be one of the revivals. I think it's going to be Angels in America. We'll get the most Tonys. Do you think Nathan Lane's going to get it? I Everybody? do. Do you? Do you think Nathan Lane will get it? I, I hope not. Yeah. I did not like <laughs> his Roy Cohn. I really did not. I mean, it's a tough category if you want to rattle yes, him off. Best performance by a featured actor, Anthony Boyle, Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, Michael Sarah, Lobby Hero, Brian Terry, Henry, Lobby Hero, Nathan Lane, Angels in America, and David Morse for The Ice Band Cometh. Wow. What a great David category. Morse for me. You do, the really. saving grace uh, of that production. Yeah, amazing yeah, performance. But you're predicting but, him to win? Oh, uh, predicting, uh, predicting I think it's gonna be Nathan Lane? Yeah, I think, I think so. I yeah. think and it's I would, just I, not a good I idea. I agree, but I would vote for Brian uh, Ty Tyree uh, Henry. Brian Henry. Yes. yes. Uh, uh, Michael Sarah was brilliant. They were that, both, and they could have included Chris Evans too, as far as I was yes. concerned, and, and as I say, and given an award to his mustache. Yes. Nathan Lane should have like seven Tonys by now. I think he only has two. So I'm gonna go out on a limb for Anthony Boyle. There you go. Oh, I'm revising it. Actually, uh, actually, uh, Harry Potter will win the most. Right. Yeah, my guess is that Harry Potter will win. Rocktopia. Harry Potter will Rocktopia. win the most Tonys. And, I say and, Rocktopia. I, th I think actually, I it, think SpongeBob. Which we don't know if it's all legit. Right in, right in no, But I think SpongeBob could get the most Tonys in for a musical because it'll get a lot of Elizabeth. I think costume sets. And they added categories. No, no, it, there are extra gonna, categories no, this year. No, if you count of you know all these categories like 
that are not televised. Best crustaceans, <laughs> yes. best cephalopods. And it's going to get best balls <laughs> jumping through. Well, Escape from Margaritaville, it was good at strong sure. balls. <laughs> with the beach ball in the audience category this year. Yes. Home for the holidays. Let's Although I would give the best, best confetti, volcano. the best confetti to summer. Did you see those silver, huge yes. silver <laughs> confetti they had? That the, was great. Those performances were great. On that I, I would give those three the winners. Why do we show where there wasn't snow this year? <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. It's almost time for the ceremony. White Christmas. Frozen. I just want to. I'm going to hold up Patrick Pacheco's book again. Thank everyone. you. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Patrick Amazon. Pacheco, Elizabeth Vincentelli, Michael Musto, Jesse Green, Adam Feldman. A courageous job. <laughs> courageous. We'll see you right after the Tonys. Thank you, everyone. Yay! Hey, it's a wrap. Thanks to the Friends of Theatre Talk for their significant contribution to this production. Theatre Talk is made possible in part by the Frederick Lowe Foundation, the Corey and Bob Dinelli Charitable Fund, the Noel Coward Foundation, Carrie J. Fries, the Dorothy Strelson Foundation, and the New York City Department of Cultural Affairs. We welcome your questions or comments for Theatre Talk. Thank you.